What is up, YouTube? My name is James, and I'm bringing you guys a brand new video here today. And as you can see, I'm wearing the same exact sweatshirt as the in the last video because I am recording this intro about 20 seconds after making the last intro of my last video. I am making a massive amount of videos right now. I'm about to go to Boston for the weekend, and I want to be prepared. I am trying to get productive back on the YouTube grind again and trying to make some content that can really help you guys as photographers. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to organize your Lightroom catalog. In the last video, I, I showed you guys how to create one and how to create import settings that will help you become as productive as you can. B. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use your collection sets and collections to be very, very organized inside Lightroom and how to organize your folders outside of Lightroom to help you be the most organized that you can be. Now, the, I think besides from actually being a photographer, when it comes to workflow and productivity in photography, I believe that being organized is probably the most important thing. When you have files that are just lying around places and you just can't find them, it is the most stressful thing in the world. I'm sure literally every single one of you watching this have, have experienced that. So, when I first started out in photography, I really did not understand like the collection sets, collections and organizing your work. So I kind of just made one folder for each thing and I just kind of did it that way and everything wasn't that organized. But now I have a very, very strict way of organizing every single photo that I have into a way that it only takes me about 30 seconds to find any picture that I could ever want. So with that being said, let's get straight into this video guys. If you guys enjoyed, please be sure to have a like, comment, and subscribe. And lastly, guys, my name is James. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Okay, guys, so we're here and ready to organize our Lightroom catalogs and our folder setups. So the first thing we're going to do is our folder setups. So first thing I want to show you guys is my folder setups that I personally use. So I, made, I got a little glimpse of this in my last video, but now I'm going to show you guys in depth what I have. So I'm going to go into my hard drive here, go to my photography folder right here. And so right here, we have all my, like, pretty much all my shit. This is literally my life in folders. So here we have 1A, main photography catalog, professional work. I don't use that anymore. Uh, myself, uh, which is just, like, pictures of myself. Um, portfolio, which I don't use anymore. I don't use myself either. And then I have master catalog in school. I was originally having all different catalogs for all different kinds of work, but then I decided, you know what, let's fuck, let's just change all that up and put it all into one master catalog, and so I did that. So first thing we're gonna look into is my master catalog. So here I have all of my raw files that I've ever taken. I have raws one, two, three, and four. Right now, all three of these are filled to the brim with all of my pictures. Um, all of the raw files that are still unnamed and badly named. I only recently started doing um, correct naming where I just name it by numbers with four digit numbers. And these are all my pictures and they all have a four digit number to it. And so that's what I use now for my naming. And so all my pictures that I use now all go into raw files four. And uh, if we go to the bottom right now, I'm at number, if we look at the bottom, we are at number 7,548. And so, so seeing that when I get to 10,000, I may have to reset and go to another one. I may not have to, I forget how that works. But anyway, then we have my catalog folder here and my Lightroom catalog is right here, untitled-2. I didn't name it, I was an idiot. Uh, but anyway, now we have my catalog, my folder where I keep all of my actual like exported files and if I keep them, the raw files for each shoot. So here I have every single shoot that I've ever done. Literally every single shoot I've ever done. All of these here. It doesn't look like that much, but it is quite a lot. So in any of the shoots that I have, I always keep one folder for the raw files, which I actually don't keep anymore because the DNGs are good enough for me. I only need one copy of my raw files because the ARWs with Sony take up a lot of file space and it just frankly isn't worth to keep them. So, and then I have an edited folder where I keep all the edited files, and if I have to do an export to Dropbox before I edit them to see, get an approval of which ones they want me to edit, 
then I make a JPEG folder. So for example, in manual personal trainer, here I have an edited folder, and I also had a JPEG folder as well, but I deleted it to save space again. Now you can see in this folder, I keep my JPEGs, my raw files, and my exported. I keep the raw files for now until I finish with the shoot. Once I finish the shoot, then I delete the raw files because I have the DNGs, but I keep these here just in case. I have my JPEGs that I exported. I exported all of them as JPEGs just to uh, upload them to Dropbox so they can choose what photos they want. And then here when I finish editing them, all the files will go into exporting. And so I, the reason why I do these folders is because I can literally go to any shoot, any shoot, and I will know where exactly like a certain picture is. So let's say I want to go back to last year, Roosevelt Field Mall. I took a really short close out with the crystal ball. And the sunset was like straight red. Heavily edited, but it's awesome. It's one of my favorite photos. I can go right down here. I go to Roosevelt Field Sunset. Let's try the first one. We'll go right here. We'll go to good. And look at that. It's right here. So you can see how easy it is to locate your files when you have everything named accordingly. And as you can see, I named them with dates. I named the dates first and then what the shoot was. The dates go first because if you have the dates first, then you can organize it by date and it's all in order. Now, one thing I didn't do yet, which I'm going to do, is put everything into years. So pretty much 2017 will be its own folder, 2016, and then when 2018 comes in, 2018 will be its own folder as well. The reason why I wanna do that is because dates overlap. If you're shooting for three years, you're gonna have multiple of the same dates and all your shit's gonna be super, super, like, fused. So, that's the thing you don't wanna do. Okay guys, so we go into our folders, now we're gonna open up Lightroom, and I'm gonna show you guys how I organize my stuff in Lightroom, and then we're gonna go do it ourselves in our new Lightroom catalog. So, we're gonna go to our, um, right here, we're gonna go backwards to our master catalog, catalog, untitled, and then to untitled dash two. And this is my personal Lightroom catalog. This is how I organize all of my work. Now, I think having these collections and collection sets are very important and increases your productivity by a lot. Your workflow is very, very much increased and it really, really works. So, if we go right here, if we get rid of all of them, I have two main collection sets. I have 2016. And I have 2017. Now, both of these collection sets are separated by year because, again, they overlap, and that's not good. So, if we go into 2017, which is the current year, I have it labeled 1 January, 2 February, etc. Because if I had just January, February, March, it would go by letter order. It would be alphabetical order, which I don't want. So, I have it in numerical order by putting a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 all the way in front of the names of the month. So if we go into, let's say we go into February. In February, I had five shoots. I had an, uh, one on the 9th, 18th, 18th again, 22nd, and 23rd. Now, they're all by dates first, so that, again, it's in date order. So now, we go to any of the shoots. Let's, go, let's say we go to uh, Jessica Chertok right here. Now we have the EP cover shoot collection set in case I had something else I wanted to uh, put there I have it in that collection set and then I have a bunch of collections here plus a uh, plus a street light collection because I wanted to put multiple collections in the street light section so here let's say we have all I keep everything in one specific folder collection rather that says all and it's every single picture throughout the whole shoot next I have favorites which are my personal favorites and then I separate into certain locations of the shoot, one which is stairs, sunset. Oh, my God, I hate that picture so much. My editing was insane back then, way too crazy. Um, sunset lights, which are these using I use some string lights and turning sunset, and then walking. And then I, in my other collection set, I have street lights, and then I have set one, and then uh, all of them together. So that's one example of how I organized. That was more back then, though. I'll show you guys something more recent now. Let's bring all that back out, just like that. And let's go to a recent shoot that I just did. Let's go to Eric Mars. 
So here Eric Mars is a perfect example of how you can organize your photos. So here we have my collection set 11.03.17, Eric Mars Studio. And now right here we have all, best slash portfolio, edited, and then fully edited. So the edited folder is kind of just like there, I don't need it anymore honestly. I decided to organize it differently when I was in the middle of doing it. So first we have all, which is every photo I took during that whole session. Next, I have best slash portfolio. These are the best photos of the shoot and that I may be considering for my portfolio. Next, I have fully edited, which is every picture that was edited completely. My computer is about to die. Fuck. <laughs> this is every photo that went into Photoshop and retouched a bit as well. Um, as you can see in this one, it's retouched. This one's retouched. And all these here are all just fully edited in Photoshop as well. So these are the ones that I'm going to be really, really like possibly using for like important stuff. And so for example, and really you can do this with anything here. All these folder, all these collections have basically the same thing all edited in portfolio. If we go to, um, for example, let's go to uh, October. We can go to, for example, um, let's go to Jack Soho. Again, we have all edited. Now, for him, we did for me. I had the pictures that I wanted to use for myself. And then we had IG in portfolio. So, a lot of times, I'll organize things. And what I want to upload just to Instagram, the ones that are edited kind of for me, the ones I edited, all the ones I edited in total, and the ones I want to have my portfolio here. So, that's a, way, a lot of ways I can, you can edit it as well. Collections are very, very like useful. You can do it the way you want to do it. It doesn't have to be this way. I recommend doing it with the dates because it makes it very, very organized into finding certain pictures and keeping everything like in its place. But again, you can do it the way you want it to do it. It's not written in stone. And really, it's all up to you. That's the beauty of it. It doesn't have to be done in a certain way. It's all up to you. So now let's quit out of this Lightroom catalog and let's go to our own. And I'll show you guys how to do exactly that. I'll show you guys how to make your collection sets and your collections and do all that stuff. So let's go right here into our catalog. Um, right here. This is the one we started using. And we're going to let that load up and we're going to get right into it. So pretty, real quick, with collection sets, you can have collection sets, but you can only put other collection sets inside collection sets. You can't put collection sets inside of collections. So collection sets are pretty much like the outside entity. They're the father, they're the parent, and collections are the child, pretty much, in a sense. So for example here, if we make a collection, let's call it A, inside this collection, if we double click and create a collection set, um, AS, that collection set will not go inside of it. It just won't. You can't put a collection set inside of a collection, but you could put a collection inside of a collection set, just like that. So let's say we're making, let's say we had a shoot today. This is our brand new catalog we just shot today for the first time. What I would do is create a collection set. I'm going to make it 2017, just like that. Now inside that, we're gonna double click 2017. We're gonna hit create collection set. And we are going to make a folder called 11 November because it is November 29th. Now inside here, we're going to put 11.29.17. I use dots as a personal preference. Um, and let's say the shoot we did was fashion editorial. Create. And now in here, I would create a collection, not a collection set. You can use collection sets if you want to and organize everything even further based on location, outfit backdrop, etc. Whatever you want to do that way. You can do that if you want to, but I personally have to do it this way. So I would create one folder that says all. Every picture is going to go in there because pictures cannot go in a collection set directly. You have to have the pictures inside of a collection. So if we make another collection here, we'd make a folder called edited and these are going to be all our edited photos. We're going to be making a folder called Instagram, which is IG. And these are the full, these are the pictures that we may possibly use for Instagram. And then this here we'll put one called here called client. And those pictures will go all to our client. 
and then you can make one more and type it portfolio and these are all the pictures that you may consider to put in your portfolio when you go back and decide what you want to when you want to update your portfolio you go through all your pictures and be like okay these are the ones out of this shoot that I may consider so that's what I would personally do and then you can organize your photos accordingly into these collections so guys that is how you use collections here I definitely recommend it it helps me so much if you guys enjoyed the video please be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and lastly guys my name is James I'll see you guys in the next video peace